This is 7.4 nonlinear systems of equations and equalities. So it's nonlinear, meaning that you're going to obviously have graphs that we've done so far in this chapter. So we've done parabolas, we've done ellipse, circles, and hyperbolas. So you will use them also in this equation. So when you're given something like this, you're going to be given something like x squared plus y squared equals 25 and then 3x minus 4y equals 0. Now previously we've done the system of equations and system of equations you have to make sure that the exponent right here matches with this one right here as well. So as long as the exponents are the same you can actually do system of equations meaning that you can do substitution method, you can do elimination method, any of those methods that we've used. But if it's not the same, then you most likely cannot do is definitely not elimination. But you can do probably substitution method where you can change the um, either 3x or 4y and then substitute it into the equation above. You can do that as well. Okay. Uh, let's graph this out first so you can kind of see how many solutions there are going to be. So in the first part right here, when I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, this looks like a circle or an ellipse, right? So I can bring this 25 over on the other side and divide it out. So if I do that, we're going to get something like x squared over 25 and then plus y squared over 25 equals 1, which then leaves me at x squared over 5 squared, right? plus y squared over 5 squared is equal to 1. So this is definitely a circle, as we learned from this chapter, that if the denominators are exactly the same, then it's going to be a circle. So let's go ahead and graph this out. The center is at 0, 0. We know that. So at 0, 0 right here, we're going to go 5 on both directions for the x and the y. So here's 4, 5, 4, 5, 5 and 5. So then I can connect those right there. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, so should be a circle. So hopefully yours will become more like a circle right there. And then we want to graph out is the other equation. So the other equation is 3x minus 4y equals 0. So that's definitely a linear equation because there is no square to it. If they're squared on one side, then it's actually a parabola as we learned. So you, you're going to have to go back to your notes on this to see the difference. But when it's a linear equation, there's nothing on the exponents. They're exponents of 1. If it's a parabola, you'll have one of these as squares, so then you're going to have to change it into parabola form. If it's both squares, then there's a couple of options. You can either have a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. And the difference between the circular and the hyperbola is that there's a minus sign in between it, where a circle and ellipse has a plus in between it. Okay? So recognize those equations because if you recognize it, it makes it easier to graph it out. All right. So since this is a linear, that means I would have to have a y equals format. So we're going to change this. We're going to bring, well, actually, if I bring this one over to the other side, it makes it easier for us. So if I have 3x is equal to, and then uh, 4y, so then y is equal to 3 over 4x right there. Okay. So this is the linear equation right there. So I can graph that out at my y-intercept is 0 because I don't have a plus something right here. And I'm going to run 4 and up, uh, up 3 on that. So 0, run 4 and up 3 to 3. So that's something like there. And then same thing with this one. You would go run 4 negative and then down 3. So somewhere around here. So using a straight edge then, connect those right there including the center right there and something like this. Okay, so what does that mean? That means wherever the two lines cross at, this is kind of like the system of equation when we did the graphing method. Remember where the two equations graph at and intersect, that is a solution. So this right here is a solution at 4, 3, and this is a solution at negative 4, negative 3. 
okay? So you could have also have um, put this right here since it's y equals. We've done this in system equations. I could substitute this back into the first equation. I'd probably put it back into here because this is in fraction form. Unless you want to deal with fractions, then you could put it into here. But other than that, you can always put it back in here. Since I already know what y equals, I could put it into this y right here, square this out right here, and then figure out what x is equal to and solve for it. Okay, or you could just do a graphing method. Hopefully it works out where you have two places where it crosses, then that's a solution. So that's my example one. Now example two. So I have then is x plus y equals five. So I know that's a linear equation. Then I have is this right here, which is y equals three minus x squared. So that's gonna be a parabola, okay? So let's change this part right here. I want y equals by itself. So we're gonna have is negative x plus five right there. So my y-intercept is at 5, and my slope is 1 over 1. So at 5 right here, running 1 and going down 1. So run 1, down 1, run 1, down 1, something like that. And then, so then there's my linear equation right here. Probably should do a couple of those just to make sure I'm good. And then from there, this equation. So this equation is obviously not a linear equation because it would have to have a single and a single like that. So since it has an exponent right here, an x squared, it's definitely a parabola. So this parabola actually can be switched to y equals negative x squared plus three. Because then from here, this tells me where the y-intercept is at three. So at three, which is about here. And it's an upside down parabola, right? Because it's a negative in front of that. So we have an upside down parabola, something like this. And when you have oh, two equations, something like this, obviously there is no intersection. So in this case, there is no solution, okay? So just put no solution and then you're done with that problem. So this is very similar to that equation or the, um, section that we did with graphing method and that we did system of equations and all of that stuff in chapter six. So that's why in chapter six, I made sure we did all of that stuff because it ties into this part and this being our last section um, for this semester. So, okay, let's try the last example, example three. So we have is four X squared minus nine Y squared equals 36. And then we also have is x squared plus y squared equals 25. So we can see that both of them are squares, meaning that if I have squares on these, there's a couple options. They would either be a circle, ellipse, or hyperbolas. They will not be linear or parabolas. So if that's a circle or hyperbola or ellipse, we need to have one on this side right here. So we need to adjust this equation. So we'll divide by 36 on both sides of that. So four divided by 36. So it goes into it evenly nine times, right? Minus y squared all over nine goes into 36 four times is equal to one. And then on this one right here should be the, if we divide by 25 on both sides, 25 plus y squared over 25 is equal to one. So this is definitely a circle right here. And if I take that, it's going to be five squared, five squared. So it's going to be a radius of five. This is three squared and this is two squared. So let's draw the circle first. So circle, the center is at zero, zero, right? And then we have a radius of five. So at zero, zero, a radius of five. So that's one, two, three, four. So if we connect those five together, uh, something like this. Hopefully yours is better on that. And then from there where you want to draw, so this is going to be definitely a hyperbola because there's a minus in between it, right? So center is zero, zero still. So on the x-axis, we're going threes on both directions. So threes from here to here. And then on the y-axis, we're going two. So two, so we should then have is our little imaginary boxes going. Something like this. Okay, so then we want to go from end to end, passing through the, uh, the uh, center right there. And we want to go from here to 
to here. And then looking at the equation right here, it says x squared. That's the first one. So the hyperbola is going to be on the x-axis. So it's going to be something like this and something like this. And the same thing with this one, something like this and over here. So that means in this case, we actually have many solutions. We're going to have four solutions. One, two, three, and four. It's basically where all the graphs meet at. So we had a circle and a hyperbola. So where the two hyperbolas meet at, that's these two right there. And then these two right there. So to solve for it, algebraically, so this is graphically. So algebraically, I'm going to start off with elimination method. And the reason why I'm choosing elimination is because both of these right here have x squares and y squared as well. So then I can do elimination method. If it had one X and one was Y squared or vice versa, if it was Y and then X squared, I could not do the elimination method because it's not the same unless both equations are the same that way. But since both of these equations have X squared and Y squared, I can actually do is the elimination method. So let's go ahead and recopy that. So I'm going to have is 4X squared minus 9Y squared is equal to 36. And then I have is x squared plus y squared equals 25. And then we'll have to decide what we're going to eliminate. So I'm going to eliminate the, um, let's go with x first. So we'll multiply everything out by 4 on this side right here. So then we have is 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 100. And then on this top part, we'll just copy that, 4x squared minus 9y squared equals 36. So both of the fours are positive, so we're going to control it out here with a minus. And so then from here, the fours will eliminate. Then I have this negative 9 minus 4, so that gives me negative 13y squared is equal to 36 minus 100 is negative 64. So we have to divide both sides by a negative 13, right? 13? Yes. So then we have a 64 over 13 because it's going to be negative divided by negative, so it becomes positive right there. So if I take the square root of this, this is going to be approximately plus and minus 2 points, about 2, 2. Um, it's an approximation because remember, this is not going to be accurate number. It's not a whole number. So it's going to be approximate. Now, when you substitute this, because once you do the elimination, normally you would do the substitution after that. So when you substitute this, I would probably substitute this right here because that's more accurate. The fraction right there than to substitute this number because this is an approximation and we round it. Unless we have more numbers, like if you carry to five decimal places, then I think you're going to become more accurate than if you just round it up to two decimal places. So I'm going to take this now and substitute it back into the first equation, the 4. So we have then is 4x squared minus 9. And then we're going to put the 64 um, over 13 inside there. And then equals 36. I'll have to do some calculations here. So squared is equal to, and then 36 plus, I believe, whatever this 9 times 64 over 13 is. So let's calculate that out. So let's see, 36 plus 9 times 64 over 13. It's going to give us about 80 points. So 4x squared is equal to 80 points. Uh, 308, somewhere around there. So we'll divide both sides by 4. So if we divide it out by 4, it's going to give us 20 points, 0, 7, 6, 9, something like that. And then if I take the square root of that, so try to keep as much as possible um, the decimal. I know I'm rounding right there, probably shouldn't be rounding so much. So approximately plus and minus. 4.48 because at the end this right here is going to be a little bit off probably by a hundredth of a number or sometimes even the tenth of a number um, if you do too much rounding right there. So those are right there is the x-intersection. So what does that mean? 
So that means on the x-axis of positive 4.48, so about 4.48, so somewhere around here, right? And the y number is 2.22, so 2.22, which is right here, that's going to be one of the solutions. So f4.4, what was it we said? 4.8, okay, so 4.8, and then 2.22, that's going to be one solution right there. So then we have to find this solution, which is the same thing, it's 4.48, but at the y is going to become negative 2.22. And then on this side right here is going to be the opposite side, so it's going to be negative 4, because remember, this is plus and minus, so now we have to take the minus 4.48, so 4.48. And obviously on this side right here, the y is going to be that 2 point, negative 2.22. And then on this top right here becomes negative 4.48 and then positive 2.22. So those are your now four solutions right there that we had to find. So that's probably going to be the most you're going to find is four solutions. Um, you're going to either have one solution, no solutions, two solutions. Uh, I don't know if you have a three solution, but this will be definitely a four solution when you have a circle and hyperbolas put together. Okay, so try to do now the MyMathLab from here.